the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. President Trump in Walter Reed Medical Center right now as he will be there for a number of days at the advice of his doctors for COVID-19 treatment. It's been almost 24 hours since the president announced he and the first lady were positive for the coronavirus. According to NBC, the president plans to work out of the presidential office while at Walter Reed. Earlier this evening, he tweeted this video message. I want to thank everybody for the tremendous support. I'm going to Walter Reed Hospital. I think I'm doing very well, but we're going to make sure that things work out. The First Lady is doing very well. So uh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. I will never forget it. Thank you. This is video of the president leaving the White House this evening, boarding Marine One for the flight to Walter Reed. Here's what we know so far. The White House doctor says the president is taking an experimental antibody cocktail along with zinc, vitamin D and aspirin. He's fatigued but in good spirits. As for the first lady, she is experiencing a mild cough and headache. Everyone else in the first family has tested negative so far. The president's campaign team says all of his planned events have either been postponed or will be held virtually. Political leaders across the world now are sharing well wishes for the first family. We heard from the former Vice President Joe Biden. My wife Jill and I prayed that they'll make a quick and full recovery. This is not a matter of politics. It's a bracing reminder to all of us that we have to take this virus seriously. It's not going away automatically. We have to do our part to be responsible. Republican Senator Mike Lee of Utah confirming he has tested positive after meeting in person with Supreme Court nominee Amy Coney Barrett on Tuesday. Justice Barrett herself tested negative today with CNN reporting that she was diagnosed with coronavirus earlier this summer, but that has she, they, she has since recovered. President Obama said this at a fundraiser tonight for Joe Biden, quote, we also want to extend our best wishes to the President of the United States, the First Lady, Michelle and I are hopeful that they are that they and others that have been affected by COVID-19 around the country are getting the care that they need, that they are going to be on the path to a speedy recovery. We have team coverage for you tonight, starting with Joe Hankey and what the president's diagnosis means for his day-to-day -day duties as leader of the free world. Today I talk with folks who have previously worked in the White House or with top White House officials and they tell me the president currently having COVID symptoms described as mild gives them no immediate concerns about the president being able to perform his day to day duties. The message from the White House tonight is one of business as usual. We've got the mitigation uh, plan in place to make sure that the government not only continues to uh, to move forward, but the, the work of the American people uh, continues. 
his health is going to have to be monitored extremely closely now, even more closely than before. John Copenhaver was the Southeast Regional Director of FEMA during the Clinton administration. He says if Trump quarantines for 14 days, that window of time raises a little concern. For that kind of a period, I think that the government will be able to continue almost unimpeded. Um, I think that the, the people who are at the tops of the agencies and departments are used to working relatively autonomously. Lots of politicians have developed COVID. They've gone through quarantine and they've emerged totally fine on the other side. Jamie Metzl, a former White House fellow and member of the National Security Council, also during the Clinton administration, believes Trump can continue to perform day to day as president, similar to how many others have recently transitioned to working from home. We all realized in our lives that we can virtualize much of what we do, and that will be the same for the president. So I have no doubt that the White House will be able to function. Not physically being in the Oval Office, perhaps, or the Situation Room, though, could limit Trump's ability to interact with staff and read the room as normal, says Clayton State. University associate professor Joshua Meta. Not technically being there is, is a bit nerve wracking, um, but it, we can handle it much better today um, in 2020 than we could, God, even five, 10 years ago. Even with mild symptoms, though, Meta says there are short term worries. Now you're seeing it in the market, really. Like the markets are scared. Stocks are like kind of shaking a little bit because we don't know. I mean, we call him the president the, is the leader of the free world. And right now we have this man who is sick um, and with a very serious virus. President Trump and the First Lady's positive COVID-19 diagnosis. The talk of testing is now again a hot topic. So we asked many of you watching if this will urge you to consider getting tested. 11 Alive She Knew Her also spoke with a medical professional about it all. With President Donald Trump going to Walter Reed Hospital, Dr. Frieda Fisher says this now thrusts the seriousness of the coronavirus to the forefront again. I believe that what happened with the president will make people understand that it doesn't discriminate. Anyone can get COVID-19. It must be respected and taken seriously. That's why she says she believes testing will rev up in the state. I do believe that more people will try to get tested and I do hope that Georgia responds and there will be a greater need and a greater availability. However, people responded with resounding no's when we posted the question on 11 Alive's social media. Following the president's diagnosis, are you more likely to get tested for COVID-19? One person said, if I have symptoms so I can protect my family. Dr. Frieda says testing is a good tool, but it doesn't prevent the spread. Instead, she says, follow the guidelines. Wear masks, socially distance, and have good hand hygiene. Well, the White House began doing daily testing earlier this year. You might recall after aides close to the president tested positive. Anyone who gets close to the president or the vice president is supposed to be tested each day, including reporters. His diagnosis is now raising questions about the daily test and their reliability and once again risking or raising rather the big mask debate. Caitlin Ross is taking a closer look from a medical perspective. Medical experts say this should be a wake up call that we all still need to take COVID-19 seriously and do whatever we can to reduce the spread. There are four things that we could all be doing to decrease uh, spread. One is uh, mask wearing, two is social distancing, three is washing hands, four is just opting for being outdoors. Dr. Murad Sami says the guidance on keeping safe from COVID-19 has been the same since the beginning. But six months into the pandemic, he says people have grown complacent about compliance. Every study that, that has come out has shown that, yes, masks do mitigate spread. So you could definitely be out in public with COVID and not know it. But if you're wearing a mask, it will prevent you from releasing droplets and aerosols containing the virus when you breathe or talk to somebody or cough. That mask serves as a barrier. Dr. Mary Beth Sexton, an infectious disease expert at Emory University, says it's scientifically proven that wearing a mask will help stop the spread of the disease and that frequent testing will also help slow infections. The White House protocol is to test people every day, but it's not foolproof. Testing is important. It's not perfect. We know that if you test negative today, for example, that just means you're negative today. It doesn't mean that you're not going to develop symptoms tomorrow. Dr. Atsami agrees and says it's difficult to know what will happen with this infection. The mild or asymptomatic patient uh, has no bearing on what their outcome will be, especially when they're early in the disease. People who have mild disease in the first week 
uh, commonly have to be admitted to the ICU the following next couple of weeks. Well, according to CNN, at least two more cases have been confirmed at the White House, and we've learned a White House press corps reporter and a Utah senator who met with the Supreme Court nominee have also tested positive. Countless people who were in contact also being uh, asked to test right now, including Joe Biden and his wife, who tested negative today after being with the president in Cleveland for Tuesday's debate. That is in addition to all of the Trump family members and White House staff members who were also in contact and are now undergoing testing. We're also hearing from Democratic vice presidential nominee Kamala Harris, the senator from California and Georgia politicians as well. Senator Harris tweeting this morning, that she and her husband joined the Bidens in wishing President Trump and the First Lady a full and speedy recovery. She went on to say, we are keeping them and the entire Trump family in our thoughts. Atlanta Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms tested positive over the summer along with her husband and one of her children. She tweeted that a COVID diagnosis is unsettling, even more so when a loved one tests positive. She wrote that her thoughts and prayers are with the first family as well. Governor Kemp tweeted that his family wishes the president and first lady a speedy recovery. He says his prayers and that of his family are with him as well. We also caught up with Congressman Doug Collins today. Collins was among several Georgia Republicans in contact with the president as he visited Metro Atlanta last week. Collins told us local leaders who met with the president that day had to take a COVID test and they maintained distance while speaking with him outside on that tarmac at Dobbins. He told us he believes the president's quarantine won't have a significant impact on his campaign. I think it's just going to focus a little bit more. I think with the president not being able to get out for, for a, a you know, number of days, that he'll just do more probably from Zoom. He'll do more on TV. He'll do more uh, interactions that way. I think it just is a reality of this is a, a, an election season in which we have to deal with the virus. Still ahead, our political and medical experts are joining us to answer your questions about the president's diagnosis. That's coming up. If you have a question you want them to answer, just text us at the number on your screen. That's 404-885-7600. Uh, we will take your questions and concerns to our experts today to try and get you the answers. Well, you're 11 Alive storm trackers enjoying this fall-like weather, like many of you are. And tonight will likely be the coldest temperature so far this season, getting down into the upper 40s. So coming up, we'll talk about what you can expect as we head into this cool, crisp weekend. We're streaming right now on the 11 Alive YouTube channel. Subscribe, join the conversation, jump in. We have more 11 Alive news in prime time right after the break. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. of a teen shot and killed by Cobb County police are calling for greater transparency in the case. Specifically, they want police to release body and dash camera video to show what happened just before Vincent Truitt was shot. 11 Alive's Latasha Givens has more from the family. My son was murdered mid-July. 
I have yet to view anybody camera footage regarding to this matter. Not only was my baby murdered, 18 hours passed before we were notified. My child died alone. I come to you this morning as a hurt, angry, all of the above as a father. The parents of Vincent Truant are sharing their daily pain over the loss of their son. According to GBI, in July, a vehicle was stolen out of Atlanta. Investigators say a Cobb County police officer spotted the stolen vehicle with three teens inside at 291 Riverside Parkway. They say the driver didn't stop for the officer, leading them on a short chase that ended at 270 Riverside Parkway. GBI says two people got out of the car and ran. At some point, Truett was shot by police. From there, the family's attorney, Gerald Griggs, says the narrative given to the Truett family has changed twice. According to law enforcement and what's been publicly reported, Mr. Truett exited the vehicle, and the first story was that he fired at the officer. We now know that that is not true. The second story is that Mr. Truett exited the vehicle and brandished a weapon. We also know that that's not true. GBI says it's still completing its investigation. An autopsy confirms the 17-year-old was shot twice in the back. His family is now calling for transparency and a detailed explanation of what led to the gunfire. Vincent has never been a violent person. He has no violent history whatsoever. Vince took pride in playing basketball on the police athletic league. And we reached out to Cobb County Police about the concerns expressed by the family, and they responded to those claims. They tell us they have been in contact with the family, but referred them to other agencies when they could no longer answer their questions. And Chief Cox wants to clarify, the department never said Truett shot at an officer. They simply said he pointed a gun at them. The GBI did recover a weapon from the scene. We'll continue to follow this investigation. Well, did you see it last night? A lot of folks were talking about the harvest moon. And this month, we not only get one harvest moon like we saw uh, Scott Anna capture, and look at this, just incredible, the detail of his photography. But we're going to get another full moon at the end of the month. So that'll make it a blue moon, and it'll be a hunter's moon, and it just happens to be on Halloween. How cool is that? We have 13 full moons this year, and two of them happen to be in October. Very interesting stuff. Looking out, you can see that Rome is looking beautiful tonight. Nice clear skies out there for doing some sky watching. And the reason why? Dry air that is filtered in is making for tremendous visibility tonight. In fact, if you take a look at our water vapor satellite imagery here, you can see those blue colors here on the map. That means that that is drier air. That's the color we use to represent the drier air. The orange air here is the moisture, and that is well off to our south over Florida and we've had a couple frontal systems responsible that moved on in and scoured out the moisture took it down over central and south Florida and then high pressure building in behind these fronts bringing in that northerly flow and that's why temperatures are going to be the coolest they have been so far this fall will be tonight with temperatures in the low 40s up in the mountains and the upper 40s here in Atlanta this morning we were at 50 that's as cool as we have been so far this season this morning at 50 we also hit that on September 30th our high today, 69. You know, that's many degrees below average. We should be around 77. But check out last year on this date, 96 degrees. So we are 27 degrees cooler this year than we were on this date last year. That's one change that I like since last year was the, is the temperatures compared to last fall. It was just so warm for so long. But a nice fall weekend is at hand. 55 right now in Canton and Dalton. 51 already in Blairsville. Those temperatures are going to be dropping really quickly. 53 in Peachtree City and 57 in the Grange. So we're running some, gosh, 10, 15 degrees colder right now than we were 24 hours ago. So we're 15 degrees colder in Peachtree City than we were at this time yesterday. So definitely feeling that uh, fall feeling out there with those clear skies overnight. Those temperatures will be dropping off. Once we get to about 6 a.m., we should be down in the 40s. And then uh, we'll see temperatures start to warm up during the afternoon. So we put a 10 on the wasometer. It's going to be beautiful, crisp fall sunshine. So we'll start it out around 47, getting up to around 71 degrees. 
with a 10 on your resometer on that scale of 1 to 11, with 11 being perfect, it's going to feel pretty perfect. It's just a little chilly to start, and that's why we put a 10 on your resometer. Then tomorrow, sunshine, 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 every hour and into the evening. Once the sun goes down, about 719, then we will have nice clear skies once again. So that will allow it to be crisp and clear and cool. It will be the coldest night of the season so far. And then slowly but surely, we're going to start warming it up as we head into next week. So this is our future radar, if you want to call it that. It does have uh, no returns on it. We're not expecting any rain at all. You can see the winds have a northerly component. Few clouds try to scoot in here, but they don't, are not too successful with high High pressure is our dominant weather feature, and Sunday looks just as gorgeous and slightly warmer. So a chilly start to our Saturday with those temperatures in the upper 40s, 71 degrees on our afternoon on Saturday afternoon. Sunday, we warm it up a few degrees on both counts, so we should be around 50 to 74. Monday, warm it up a little bit more and then a little bit more on our Tuesday and Wednesday. 11s on the wasometer on those two days because temperatures are going to be pretty close to average for this time of year, a little cool to start. And then we're staying dry clear through the end of next week. So this is the week to get some great stuff done outside. It's just too perfect to stay inside. All right, thank you. Now to a look at some of the other top headlines that we are following today. Governor Kemp announcing that increased funding for nursing homes and long-term care facilities will be front and center. The governor pledging $113 million in CARES Act coronavirus relief funds to increase staffing and COVID-19 response to those most vulnerable to the virus. $78 million will go toward testing nursing home staff. The state also committing up to $35 million in staffing support through the end of the year to make sure facilities have enough personnel to safely care for their residents. The Georgia Department of Public Health says it received the first shipment of rapid COVID-19 tests today. The initial batch contains more than 200,000 of the tests, but Georgia should get 3 million tests by the end of the year. These first tests will be distributed statewide to schools and colleges and universities. And among first responders and other critical areas of need, the tests require a nasal swab and results are available in about 15 minutes. The eyes of the nation closing in on the White House hours after learning President Trump and the First Lady test positive for COVID ahead on primetime. We speak to Chuck Todd, the moderator of Meet the Press, about what's going on in Washington, D.C. and this close to the election, what it may mean for the rest the of the country. Of the ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today.
In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we Earlier today, before the news, uh, President Trump going to Walter Reed Hospital, I talked with NBC's Chuck Todd, the moderator of Meet the Press, about how the president's diagnosis really impacts Washington, D.C., and the trickle down to the rest of the country. Chuck, it is uh, a difficult time in Washington, D.C. right now. The whole city, the whole political uh, mechanics of the American government really on edge right now. Absolutely, Jeff. I mean, the, 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 there's a basic question we all have is how extensive is this, is this outbreak among America's political leadership? Because the real concern here, as we've seen, it's quite a few people that seem to be connected to the to some place in this White House that that may be part of spreading. You know, we have Hope Hicks, the president's very close aide, then the president. You've got Senator Mike Lee, you've the president of the University of Notre Dame, who was also at the ceremony with Amy Coney Barrett last weekend. So there's there's certainly and and then of course you have the president's chief of staff, and while he has not tested positive, he was with the president in Cleveland at the debate. He doesn't wear a mask very often. He was with Judge Amy Coney Barrett on Capitol Hill. He met in the last 48 hours face to face with Mitch McConnell and probably half the Senate Republicans on the Judiciary Committee. So um, that is why Washington and the American political leadership in general is a bit on edge. The Biden campaign obviously was concerned. So far it looks like they've all, everybody in their traveling party to the debate has tested negative. Um, but that is that is on edge. N never mind the operational impact this is having on the Trump campaign short term. How do you think it impacts voters? And that's a very tough question. Uh, all I can say is this, that, that coronavirus yeah. has been very difficult on the Trump White House. It, it has not been something that they have controlled very well and they have paid a yeah. price for it. So you wonder how it plays out this time around with voters. Look, I think it... I, I, you bring up, that's exactly the point I would have made, Jeff, was I don't know how they're going to react now. I can tell you how they've reacted before, right? Whenever the virus is front and center, the president pay, has been paying a political price. I, I believe that, the Joe, that a larger chunk of Joe Biden's lead is due to perceptions of how the president has handled this pandemic. That said, um, you know, the president's battling here, and, and there's certainly going to be an empathetic um, feel to this as well. I think the vice president and his campaign need to be very mindful of tone, need to be very mindful of, you know, and I think, I mean, think about it. Joe Biden is essentially running on character, running on the idea that he is, he is full of empathy. Um, you, you better have empathy for everybody, not just for the folks that support you. Meet the Press, Sunday, 10 a.m., right here on 11 Alive. Thank you, Chuck. Or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today.
In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you Today's revelation raises concerns about the president's health and threatens to create chaos just 32 days before the election. Alice Barr is in Washington now with the latest. With one late night tweet, President Trump has become the face of the COVID-19 pandemic, announcing both he and First Lady Melania Trump tested positive for the virus. They remain in good spirits. Uh, uh, the president does have mild symptoms. The White House offering only vague details. I'm not going to get into any particular treatment that he may or may not have. At 74 and overweight, the president is considered at higher risk for serious complications. He and the first lady are isolating inside the White House. For the president, there are specific factors that put him at a higher risk for serious complications, so the next few days will be critical to monitoring the president. Now begins a high-stakes hunt for anyone President Trump has had contact with during a busy week, including Tuesday night's debate, during which the Trump family violated a mandatory mask mandate. The president's senior advisor, Hope Hicks, who traveled with him this week, tested positive yesterday. The White House chief of staff saying today they learned of her diagnosis as President Trump was leaving for a New Jersey fundraiser last night. It was deemed safe for the president to go. Um, he socially distanced. Hours before revealing his diagnosis, the president downplayed coronavirus in a pre-recorded message for a charity event. I just want to say that the end of the pandemic is in sight. Democratic rival Joe Biden sending his well wishes. He tested negative today. President Trump forced to cancel in-person appearances in a critical setback to his campaign, if not his health, 32 days before the election. President Trump now joins a growing list of world leaders who have tested positive for COVID-19. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson was among the first major world leaders confirmed to have the virus. Johnson faced criticism for downplaying the pandemic. He was treated in an ICU for symptoms, but later recovered. Tonight, we're looking into a new claim about an app from the Biden campaign. The question whether it lets users see the voting records or the contacts in their phone. Here's what our Verify team found out. Tweets like these saying Joe Biden's campaign app tells you which of your contacts have or have not voted led to emails from you asking if it was really true. To verify, we downloaded the app ourselves and checked the fine print of its terms and conditions. So if you install the Vote Joe app, you wind up at a page where it asks to see your contacts. If you click yes, it gives you a list of all your contacts with a little image next to them. Donkey means registered Democrat, elephant registered Republican. This ballot symbol means they're in a battleground state and you get a smiley face if you vote often and a sleepy face if you don't. So if you click on a name, it shows you which elections they voted in, but that's where it stops. You can't see who they actually voted for, just the elections they participated in. So yes, this is a real function of the app, but how does it do this and is it accurate? Well, when you give the app access to your contacts, it takes the numbers and names in your phone and compares them to a database of public voter information kept by the Biden team. But is it accurate? Not always. The app has a disclaimer that since it's using public records, it may be inaccurate or outdated. In our test, a few contacts actually showed up as their relatives because they share phone accounts. So yes, the app does let you see voter information about your contacts using public records from past elections. That's verified. The only real way to opt out of this is saying no when it asks permission to view your contacts. And disclaimer, there's no real way to stop someone else from looking up your basic voting information because it is public record. Folks, if you've got other questions you want us to look into, send us an email.
Don't forget the deadline to register for the November election is Monday. The state is urging everybody to check their registration status before the deadline. To do that, you go to the Secretary of State's website and you find the MVP section. That stands for My Voter Page. You can check your status and register if you're not registered already. 11 Alive committed to helping you being informed ahead of the November election. For details on how you can register along with other election resources, go to 11alive.com slash vote. It's been called the trial of the century. Back in the mid 90s, so many eyes were glued to the OJ Simpson double murder trial. OJ accused of killing his wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend, Ronald Goldman. Well, tomorrow marks 25 years since the jury acquitted Simpson of all criminal charges. The man representing OJ, the late Johnny Cochran. Our Nick Sturdivant spoke with Cochran's daughter in Atlanta as she reflects on the verdict that captivated the country. It's all anyone could talk about. So I had a heightened sense of anxiety, just like the rest of the world. October 3rd, 1995. The verdict millions of people waited for. Orenthal James Simpson, not guilty of the crime of murder in violation of penal code section 187. I wanted my dad to be safe. I wanted him to be able to go back to his normal life. And I'm Tiffany Cochran. Thanks for joining us. At the time, Tiffany Cochran was a budding TV anchor and reporter in South Carolina and also the daughter of the man who took a leading role in O.J. Simpson's defense, Johnny Cochran. I just remember my dad calling me one night and saying, I need to talk with you. And I was like, OK, what? And he said, I've decided to join the um, O.J. Simpson defense team. And I was like, good for you. And he was like, no, this is going to impact you because the whole world is going to be watching. People are not going to be happy, and I just have no idea how this is going to trickle down. It got to the point that Tiffany started getting calls from the media, threats from viewers, and eventually had to step away from work, thousands of miles away from home. Oh, my dad was like, I'm going to hire a security guard to watch, watch over you. And I was like, all right. So I remember we were in a hotel room when the verdict came in. And, you know, he was like, do you mind if I watch? I was like, oh, you know. And it was just like, he was like, wow. And I was like. He's like, your life is really not, is really, really, really never going to be the same now. And I know that my dad was ready to get back to a sense of um, normalcy in his life. If it doesn't fit, you must acquit. While her father covered many high profile cases before his death in 2005, Tiffany says he prided himself helping anyone who needed help. His dream was to make sure everyone has a path to justice. And one phrase that came out of the Simpson trial were, you know, was the no J's because he loved representing the everyday person. Quite a case there. Many people remember where they were. Remember those feelings watching it. Well, nearly two years after that famous verdict, Simpson was found liable for the wrongful deaths of Brown Simpson and Goldman during a civil trial. In a separate case, Simpson was released from a Nevada prison in 2017 after serving nine years for kidnapping and armed robbery in Las Vegas. But a Vegas. period in Atlanta that <laughs> was as well. It certainly was. Man. So to come in prime time, the president's diagnosis has many people asking questions about his health. Next, we are bringing our medical correspondent, Dr. Sujatha Reddy, into the conversation to answer your questions. Well, we have our latest tropical storm. It's the 25th one of this Atlantic hurricane season, and it's about 135 miles southeast of Cozumel. So coming up, where this storm could be headed and its possible impacts on the Gulf Coast this weekend. Twenty dust masks for ninety-seven dollars. Are you doing this to help people, or are you doing this to make money, or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during prime time. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. 
For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus-related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought. We know you have a lot of questions after learning both the president and first lady tested positive for COVID-19 late last night. So we took your questions to our medical expert, Dr. Sujatha Reddy. Many of you are wondering about the risk factors due to the president's age and weight. And we asked Dr. Reddy why weight is also a concerning risk factor. We know that people that have obesity or are obese are more likely to have other problems like diabetes, high blood pressure, which by themselves are risk factors for severe complications of coronavirus. But there may also be other things going on, like obesity itself makes you more prone to having blood clots in your leg or in your lungs. And we know that coronavirus sets off a major inflammatory response in the body that can also make a person more likely to have a blood clot. So perhaps already having a, you know, a propensity to blood clots and adding COVID makes that person more at risk. Dr. Reddy says symptoms for COVID-19 can take anywhere from three to 14 days to develop. And while his age and weight put the president at a higher risk, we asked Dr. Reddy some of the key ways President Trump and others can keep mild symptoms they're experiencing from worsening. Early on for mild symptoms, the treatment's going to be primarily treating the symptoms the person's having. It's all the stuff our moms told us to do, rest, drink lots of fluids, and you know, just kind of take it easy to let your immune system do its thing. Some of you also concerned about the long-term effects of battling COVID-19. We asked Dr. Reddy about the potential for lingering issues. There have been case reports of people dealing with trouble breathing and other complications for months after um, being discharged from the hospital with COVID-19. I think most people recover without any complications, but I think as we're learning, we're seeing that some people, usually the ones that are severely ill and hospitalized, are having some long-term issues. For full coverage on the president's diagnosis and the latest updates, you can always head over to 11alive.com. But it's the first weekend of October and Auburn is coming to Athens to take on the Bulldogs. So we are expecting that perfect fall football weather that you often don't see in Athens uh, this time of year. So it is going to be nice and cool and it's a night game. So temperatures will be dropping during the game. If you happen to be one of those going to Sanford Stadium, notice how those temperatures are going to be dropping down at the end of the game into the mid to low 50s. Looking out over Athens tonight, Sanford Stadium is all 
all illuminated in red and they're looking forward uh, to those temperatures that are going to be nice and crisp this weekend. In fact, it's already 57 degrees in Athens, running 13 degrees cooler than we were at this time yesterday. So some big changes heading on in. So it's largely due to this drier air mass that is filtering in. You can see the blue here on the map. That's representative of the drier air on our atmospheric moisture satellite. And it shows that all that moisture has been moved down into Florida and high pressure here is our dominant weather feature behind the front, bringing in a northerly wind flow. So that northerly wind flow, of course, is drier, it's cooler, and that's why temperatures are going to be dropping as we head into the overnight tonight. Also, interestingly enough, on the southern end of the first front that moved through here, oftentimes this time of year, tropical storms form along frontal boundaries, and that appears to be what is happening here with our latest tropical storm. Of course, we're now into the Greek alphabet, the third letter in the Greek alphabet, which is gamma, and you can see that we have tropical storm gamma here about 135 miles uh, east southeast of Cozumel, Mexico. Now it has 40 mile per hour max sustained winds. It is expected to strengthen as it moves into the Gulf over the course of the weekend. The satellite, uh, the um, the spaghetti models have been in kind of in disagreement as to exactly where this system's going to be heading, and it's still quite a few days out. Uh, most of them say it's going to be impacting the Gulf Coast of Mexico, but we do have a few rogue models that are indicating it could stray off course and head to the north. So we'll have to watch it carefully. Uh, if all goes as these models are indicating, it will be entering the Mexican Gulf Coast sometime next week. So we're all the way to the third storm on the Greek list, having already gotten through our regular list from the National Hurricane Center this year. The next name on the list is Delta, and we do have a system we're watching for potential development here that is uh, in the Caribbean. It is south of um, Cuba right here, and actually its path is south of Cuba. It's actually south of Puerto Rico and it has a 40% chance of developing in the next five days. So we will be watching that one carefully as well as we may end up having Tropical Storm Delta by the time we get to next week. And, you know, it seems like tropical season has been going on forever. The peak was September 10th, of course. It started on June 1st, but the season doesn't end until November 30th. So we still have almost two months to go. Of course, a hurricane can form any time of year, tropical storm any time of year, but these are usually the most likely times that a tropical storm will form. Here, it is gonna be a beautiful weekend. No worries for us here. 10 on the wasometer on our Saturday, starting out in the upper 40s, getting into the low 70s by the afternoon. So it'll be one of those, you need a jacket to start in the morning, or at least a really good sweater. And then by the afternoon, we're gonna be able to wear a t-shirt and shorts. It's gonna be so beautiful. So as we get into the next 12 hours, we'll see those temperatures uh, dropping down pretty low into the upper 40s, lots of sunshine, and then tomorrow, Tomorrow, temperatures warming up nicely by lunchtime in the mid 60s feeling pretty good out there but by the heat of the afternoon low 70s not too bad at all so the next seven days we have a chilly start to our Saturday and to our weekend the first weekend of October we will end up seeing nice clear skies over this weekend for the most part just a few puffy clouds from time to time getting into Sunday we're up in the mid 70s warm up a little bit more Monday and Tuesday in fact we end up with a couple 11s on the wasometer as we head into our Tuesday and Wednesday with temperatures getting up in the upper 70s and we're dry all week long through the end of the week until we get to Friday. And that's when we have just a 20% chance of a few showers as we wrap up this week. About 40,000 people are diagnosed with type 1 diagnosed uh, with uh, type 1 each year in the United States. Dominique Trapillo never expected to be one of them. She is 25 always had been very healthy. She also never expected the way a life-saving companion would come to her rescue. Here's Cheryl Preheim. A puppy with life-changing, life-saving potential. Yeah, I named him Bowie. Um, he's named after Chadwick Bozeman. Bowie is in training. He's training to fulfill his purpose. Bowie is actually living up to his name already. Bowie has already come to the rescue of Dominique Trapio. You know, he's going to be saving my life. In her early 20s, she was the picture of health, young, athletic. Her body started shutting down. She had no idea why. I honestly thought, like, maybe this is the end, so I ended up calling my mom. The diagnosis? Type 1 diabetes. So I work at Emory Healthcare. The young woman who loves helping others found herself on the receiving end. It really taught me not to take 
every day for granted, you know, you're not promised another day. But she'd need help to safely get through her days and nights long term. And that's where Bowie comes in. When we say that Bowie can save your life, that's yeah. not overstating it, right? Not at all. No, he actually alerted me at least four times that my blood sugar was out of range already, and he's only three months old. Bowie is learning to smell when there are changes in her blood sugar. It often happens when Dominique is sleeping. Bowie wakes her in time to get the treatment she needs. The dogs range anywhere from $20,000 up to $40,000. But I found that there are a lot of people that really care and that are willing to bless you. Every name and gift is a step closer to a superhero pup, always being next to the one he's trained to protect. He loved me. I love him. I think we're going to be an excellent team. Dominique and Bowie had more training today. They hope to be together soon on a permanent basis. We have more information on how you can help make that possible, along with resources on type 1 diabetes on 11alive.com. Do you have what it takes to work the polls on election day? Next, we'll take a look at the hours and hours of training people go through to make sure that your vote is secure. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus-related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Recruiting efforts continue trying to get enough poll workers for Election Day. The pandemic created a shortage. Traditionally, poll workers have been older, the group now most vulnerable to COVID-19. Many counties have been working to get more young people to fill the positions. Our Chrissy Diaz spoke with a trainer about what it takes to become a poll worker. Would you say most young people do it because they want to get paid? Uh, yeah, and honestly, I don't, think, I don't see anything wrong with that, right? It's work. It's labor. 
Evan Malbro trains people who apply to work the polls, and surprise, it's not a volunteer post. In fact, it's pretty rigorous training. Classes range from four hours to eight hours, depending on the county. After the dysfunction during the June primary, many counties have made adjustments to the training process, including smaller in-person training classes, each potential poll worker with his own machine to practice and a more difficult test to pass. What we go over is broad specs of setting up a precinct, breaking down the precinct, all the way down to the minute of uh, which college IDs in the state of Georgia are valid voter ID. If you pass, you are certified for the day of the election. Evan says that's when it gets intense. Hey, these are pretty, pretty long and grueling days, right? You can't leave, right? And there are no shifts. You are there for the entire day. Since you're there before polls open and will stay long after they're closed, they encourage poll workers to vote early. So if a young person is watching right now, what's your best pitch about why they should become a poll worker? Absolutely. Um, it's a great opportunity uh, to see how democracy works firsthand because you'll be a part of it. And then it's a great way to get paid. Well, the best way for you to get started is to go to your county's website and look for a link there to apply. Evan says if you really want a chance to work the presidential election in November, you should reach out right away because this month will be full of training leading up until Election Day. We have put together a voter guide on 11alive.com slash vote to answer all of your questions from how to register to tracking down your polling location to requesting an absentee ballot. Ahead in prime time, we continue to follow the president's condition as he has now been taken to Walter Reed after testing positive for coronavirus. We're digging deeper into the impact on the nation's security and the presidential race. Watching your eyes, nose and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during prime time. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On New developments today in the case of Breonna Taylor. Hours before noon, uh, grand jury recordings were released, and this just two days after Kentucky's attorney general requested a delay. Here's Jay Gray with the details. 
After months of protest and demands from her family for transparency and more information in the death of Breonna Taylor, today, Kentucky Attorney General Daniel Cameron, complying with a court order, released audio recordings of the grand jury proceedings in the case. Louisville police officer Sean Hoover describing the scene just before the raid. We knocked on the door, said police, waited, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds, knocked again. Witnesses and Taylor's boyfriend, Kenneth Walker, who was inside her apartment, say they did not hear officers announce themselves before crashing through the front door. Some of the most compelling sound is from Officer John Mattingly, the jury listening to a March interview where he describes being shot by Walker, who says he thought Mattingly was an intruder. As soon as the shot hit, I could feel the heat in my leg, and so I just returned fire and got four rounds off. About 15 hours of audio is being released. Cameron, in a written statement, saying, I'm confident that once the public listens to the recordings, they will see that our team presented a thorough case to the Jefferson County Grand Jury. Taylor's family and supporters across the country say Selfie! the tapes are the next step in their ongoing march for justice. 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. President Trump at Walter Reed Medical Center tonight. He will be there for treatment. On the advice of his doctors, it's been almost 24 hours since the president announced he and the first lady tested positive for the coronavirus. According to NBC, the president plans to work out of the presidential office while at Walter Reed. Earlier this evening, he tweeted out this video message. I want to thank everybody for the tremendous support. I'm going to Walter Reed Hospital. I think I'm doing very well, but we're going to make sure that things work out. The first lady is doing very well. So uh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. I will never forget it. Thank you. White House officials say they have no immediate concerns about the president being able to perform his day to day duties. But there are questions about what happens now inside the White House and with the government. We asked a former Clinton administration official who says government should be able to continue to run unimpeded. All of this happening in the final weeks before Election Day, now 32 days away. The diagnosis forcing the president's team to postpone campaign events. Our Joe Hinkey has more on the ripple effect. This might be the October surprise that we always try to talk about in political science. President Donald Trump's re-election campaign turned upside down just over a month before Election Day. The Trump campaign today releasing a statement reading in part, all previously announced campaign events involving the president's participation are in the process of being moved to virtual events or are being temporarily postponed. In addition, previously announced events involving members of the first family are also being temporarily postponed. Overnight, Trump's challenger, former Vice President Joe Biden, was handed an opportunity and the Trump campaign is scrambling, says Clayton State University Associate Professor Joshua Mehta. He's been trying to keep the discussion of coronavirus off the table with debates and campaigning. That's just was their, one of their back burner strategies. This is the opportunity for the Biden camp to just really hammer home on the virus and the numbers and the spread and everything else that's going on because it is forefront news now and there's nothing that the Trump campaign to do to, to kind of keep it off the table. With the coronavirus now front and center, the Trump campaign's messaging will have to change, says White House fellow from the Clinton administration, Jamie Metzl. Their main talking point, uh, the virility of, of the president, is significantly undermined. President Trump was mocking uh, Vice President Biden in the debates for wearing a mask. Well, now we see what happens when you're not careful, when you, when you aren't wearing a mask. Now tonight, a second Trump-Biden debate is in serious question. And Meta says if the two do not debate again, that could hurt Trump on election day. That is the lasting image, that last debate of him undercutting the moderator, uh, Wallace, or undertalking uh, the Vice President Biden. That's not going to help that campaign. And Meta adds the upcoming vice presidential debate is now more important than ever. As Senator Kamala Harris and Vice President Mike Pence debating, that could be the last time the two campaigns are on national TV at the same time. As long as this case remains mild while he is under quarantine, this will be a new type of virtual campaigning for President Trump, who has not shied away from large rallies with little social distancing. In comparison, Joe Biden's events have been almost entirely virtual. It also appears the White House still has no plans to mandate masks inside the building. A senior White House official describing face coverings as a, quote, personal choice today, according to the Associated Press. 
Medical research shows the next 10 days could be critical for the president and first lady. The first week can be mild symptoms, but doctors say around seven days in is when someone can start experiencing shortness of breath and could be admitted to the hospital. By day 10 or 11 is when people with more severe symptoms end up in an ICU. After President Trump and the First Lady's positive COVID-19 diagnosis, the talk of testing is now again a hot topic. So we asked many of you uh, if this will urge you at all to consider getting tested. 11 Alive's Janu Her spoke about um, uh, spoke rather with a medical professional about all of this. Dr. Frida Fisher is a triple board certified doctor at Emory University Hospital. She believes because of President Trump's positive COVID-19 diagnosis, local COVID-19 testing lines could get longer. With President Donald Trump going to Walter Reed Hospital, Dr. Frida Fisher says this now thrusts the seriousness of the coronavirus to the forefront again. I believe that what happened with the president will make people understand that it doesn't discriminate. Anyone can get COVID-19. It must be respected and taken seriously. That's why she says she believes testing will rev up in the state. I do believe that more people will try to get tested, and I do hope that Georgia responds and there will be a greater need and a greater availability. However, people responded with resounding no's when we posted the question on 11 Alive's social media. Following the president's diagnosis, are you more likely to get tested for COVID-19? One person said, if I have symptoms so I can protect my family. Dr. Frieda says testing is a good tool, but it doesn't prevent the spread. Instead, she says, follow the guidelines. Wear masks, socially distance, and have good hand hygiene. And Dr. Frieda says even if you're asymptomatic, but you've been exposed to someone who has COVID-19, you should get tested. President Trump has two of the biggest risk factors when it comes to COVID-19. He is 74 and is medically considered obese. Caitlin Ross talked to medical experts here in Georgia about what that could mean. Even though the entire world has been studying COVID-19 closely, medical experts say there's still so much we don't know about the virus. While the president does have increased risk factors, Dr. Mary Breath Sexton, an expert in infectious disease, says age doesn't mean everything. But one of the things we know with COVID is we have seen people in their 90s who have no symptoms and people in their 20s who land in the intensive care unit. So some of this we don't fully understand yet about who gets so sick and why. Dr. Sexton says advanced age has proven to be more of a risk factor, so we wanted to look at the numbers here in Georgia. The first lady is 50 years old. Here in Georgia, that age group is broken down to 50 to 59. There have been almost 46,000 cases, 5,000 of them hospitalized, and 665 deaths. The president is 74. In his age group, there have been almost 18,000 cases in Georgia, with nearly 5,000 hospitalizations and 1,898 deaths. So while there are fewer cases in the president's age group, that population has accounted for more of the deaths. Dr. Murdad Sami says he hasn't seen a slowdown of patients coming into his hospital in any age group. I haven't seen a single change. I'm seeing the same numbers of elderly patients as I am, teenagers as I am, even children. The White House reports the president and the first lady have mild symptoms right now, so doctors say that means supportive care, getting plenty of rest, drinking plenty of fluids, and isolation. Obesity is also a major factor. According to the CDC, it may triple the risk of hospitalization due to infection. It also decreases lung capacity and can make ventilation more difficult, and it's been linked to an impaired immune system. President Trump spent this past week traveling to several states, first from Washington, D.C. to Ohio, then Minnesota and out to New Jersey. Along the way, coming in contact with a lot of people who could now be potentially exposed. Some White House staff in contact with the president are now self quarantining and more could be identified as health officials conduct contact tracing to notify people potentially exposed. Here's reveal investigator Andy Parati with a reminder of how that works. From restaurants to schools, contact tracing has helped public health officials track those potentially exposed to reduce the spread of the virus. Here's how it works. After a local health department has notified someone tests positive for COVID-19, a contact tracer tracks down the infected patient. They then request contact information of the people who they were around, starting at least two days before exhibiting symptoms. But not everyone. 
only people who are within six feet for 15 minutes or more at a time. Fazle Khan is the chief epidemiologist at Fulton County's Board of Health. Even if, let's say, a person who was infected was walking behind the counter or somewhere and was just casually serving people, that would not constitute a close contact. But his or her fellow staff who are working in and around them in close proximity would be close contacts. If a person is a school teacher, on the other hand, it could be 100 kids that were potentially, and then others, faculty and staff, that could have been potentially infected. Identities of positive COVID-19 patients are kept anonymous. Those exposed are asked to self-quarantine for at least 14 days. Contact tracing is going to be really important. Bob Bednarczyk is an assistant professor of global health and epidemiology at Emory's Rollins School of Public Health. Even if they don't personally feel ill, they can still be infected, they can still be potentially spreading the virus. Some Georgia counties use text messaging to notify potentially COVID-infected patients, but epidemiologists say that should not replace what they call shoe leather epidemiology, which includes calling and talking to someone on the phone. We have more coverage on 11alive.com for you, including reaction from local politicians, those wishing the first family well, and others not so sympathetic. You can also download the 11 Alive News app. The Secretary of State says half of voters in Gwinnett County who requested an absentee ballot for the upcoming election will likely have to wait. We looked into the delay last week after a voter reached out to us. A recent change in Gwinnett County requires bigger text on the envelopes containing absentee ballots, making the envelopes themselves bigger. The state says this is slowing down the process because neither the county nor election vendors can process these large envelopes. So they have turned to a third party in New York. Because of the delays, the state says the county has only been able to mail out half of the 120,000 ballots requested in Gwinnett. People in Georgia now have until Monday to register if they want to vote in the presidential election in November. We have heard from voters who say they were active in the past but still found the registration status had changed. So here's an easy way for you to check. Just go to the Secretary of State's website and find the MVP section. That stands for My Voter Page. You can check your status and even register to vote if you have not done so already. Young and first time voters could play a big role in this year's upcoming election. It's happening everywhere from protests to high schools and on social media sites. I spoke with one DeKalb County student hoping to increase the number of young voices heard this November. I do think everybody should get out and vote and take it serious. 17 year old Arielle Sanford can't wait to vote. And while she won't hit the age requirement before November's election, the Arabia Mountain High School student is part of a wave of young people jumping feet first into the election process. And she's hoping to bring others along with her. I do feel like our vote does count. And I just thought it would be an amazing opportunity for us to vote at such a young age. This year, DeKalb County and Atlanta Public Schools have teamed up with When We All Vote, a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization working to increase voter participation and close the gaps in race and age by changing the culture of voting. The group was launched in 2018, co-chaired by big names like former First Lady Michelle Obama, Lin-Manuel Miranda, Tom Hanks, Faith Hill, and Tim McGraw. The campaigns from both districts have used good trouble in their names after the popular saying from late Georgia Congressman John Lewis. Student ambassadors like Sanford got resources to lead voting efforts at their schools and in their communities. And they're not alone in their work. Other districts like Gwinnett and Fulton County Schools both confirm their own regular efforts over the years and even in the pandemic to encourage eligible students to vote. But schools aren't the only places getting involved. Facebook has helped 2.5 million people sign up to vote and the social media app Snapchat reports helping more than a million users register to vote. The company says more than half are first time voters and more than 80 percent are younger than 30, with Georgia listed as one of the states seeing the largest number of additions. To me, it shows that we're being serious about voting and how serious voting is and how like our voices do need to be heard and that if we want to change, we should all get out to vote. 
If you are still looking to make your voice heard, remember in Georgia, you have to be 17 and a half to register and 18 years old to cast a ballot. If you have questions about the upcoming election or you just want to tell us about your voting experience, you can text us. Here's the number. It's there on your screen. 404-885-7600. Be sure to include your name and where you live. You can also find important resources like other deadlines and a guide for how you can register over on 11alive.com slash vote. Your 11 Alive storm trackers keeping a close eye on those temperatures and it's looking like overnight tonight will end up being the coldest temperature we have had so far this fall getting down into the low to upper 40s all across North Georgia. So coming up what you can expect for this weekend and how long this clear fall pattern will last. And don't forget, we are streaming right now on our 11 Alive YouTube channel. That's where you can subscribe and join the conversation in our community section. There's more 11 Alive news in prime time after this break. We hear you and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. The family of a teen shot and killed by Cobb County police are calling for greater transparency in the case. Specifically, they want police to release body and dash camera video to show what happened just before Vincent Truitt was shot. 11 Alive's Latasha Givens has more from the family. My son was murdered mid-July. I have yet to view any body camera footage regarding to this matter. Not only was my baby murdered, 18 hours passed before we were notified. My child died alone. I come to you this morning as a hurt, angry, all of the above as a father. The parents of Vincent Truant are sharing their daily pain over the loss of their son. According to GBI, in July, a vehicle was stolen out of Atlanta. Investigators say a Cobb County police officer spotted the stolen vehicle with three teens inside at 291 Riverside Parkway. They say the driver didn't stop for the officer, leading them on a short chase that ended at 270 Riverside Parkway. GBI says two people got out of the car and ran. At some point, Truett was shot by police. From there, the family's attorney, Gerald Griggs, says the narrative given to the Truett family has changed twice. According to law enforcement and what's been publicly reported, Mr. Truett exited the vehicle, and the first story was that he fired at the officer. We now know that that is not true. The second story is that Mr. Truett exited the vehicle and brandished a weapon. We also know that that's not true. GBI says it's still completing its investigation. An autopsy confirms the 17 year old was shot twice in the back. His family is now calling for transparency and a detailed explanation of what led to the gunfire. Vincent has never been a violent person. He has no violent history whatsoever. Vince took pride in playing basketball on the police athletic league. 
And we reached out to Cobb County Police about the concerns expressed by the family, and they responded to those claims. They tell us they have been in contact with the family, but referred them to other agencies when they could no longer answer their questions. And Chief Cox wants to clarify the department never said Truett shot at an officer. They simply said he pointed a gun at them. The GBI did recover a weapon from the scene. We'll continue to follow this investigation. Well, a lot of folks were just buzzing about the incredible moon that we've been seeing the last couple of days. Last night was technically the full moon, the harvest moon, and Scott, Anna, uh, Anna, I always want to say Anna, Anna captured this picture of the harvest moon. Just incredible detail in his photography and nice clear skies again tonight. And it's just as bright tonight. It's 99.9% .9 of illumination. So basically 100% of its brightness out there and nice clear skies in which to see it. And the reason why it's clear is that dry air that moved in. In fact, as we take a look at the water vapor satellite imagery, you can see where it's blue is where it's dry and where it's orange is where it's more moist. So we have dry out considerably all that dry air spilling all the way down into Florida behind a couple of frontal systems that moved through earlier in the week and behind that we have seen that nice dry air moving in around high pressure that's off to our north so that brings in that northerly flow for us which will allow our conditions to really cool off effectively tonight so expect those temps in the low to mid 40s across much of North Georgia as we head into the overnight hours and this is such a contrast to last year I mean only 69 today that was eight degrees below the average of 77 and last year on this date do you remember I remember it seared into my brain we just had hot day after hot day 90 degree reading after 90 degree reading so 96 degrees was the high one year ago today so I'm kind of liking this little twist in this fall weather that we're seeing it's very refreshing so it's 46 degrees is the current temperature in Blairsville it's already 46 dew points are in the mid 30s so there's potential we could even drop into the 30s in some valley locations in north georgia tonight that is really something 54 in clayton 55 in canton 50 in carrollton and right now it's 51 in peachtree city so temperatures have dropped some 15 degrees cooler than we were at this time yesterday in peachtree city 18 degrees cooler than we were at this time yesterday in the grange that's almost 20 degrees so we're definitely going to be feeling a lot cooler tomorrow you want to grab a jacket before you head out the door in the morning as it will be the coldest air of the season so far and we're gonna have to wait a while to warm up it'll be a gradual warm-up uh, we'll see those temperatures getting back up in the upper 70s by the time we get to the middle of the week before tonight it will be crisp it will be cold we'll see those temperatures down in the upper 40s clear skies all night long and a great for stargazing or moon gazing as we head into our Saturday at 10 on the wisometer on that scale of 1 to 11 with 11 being a perfect day almost perfect we're just starting out a little on the cool side and that's why we've put a 10 on the wisometer and we'll be a little cool for a high temperature we should be around 77 this time of year so 71 most people don't mind that too much but we'll see plenty of sunshine during the day so it'll feel warm when you're in your car and then you have to take your jacket off once you get in your car because you get that little greenhouse effect on wheels so as we head through the day tomorrow plenty of sunshine throughout the day and skies will stay clear that's due to that northerly flow this would normally be our future rate are, but there's no rain expected as we head into tonight or tomorrow. We'll continue with that north easterly flow throughout the day tomorrow and that means as we head into Sunday we're going to start it out clear as well and nice and cool and then warming up into the 70s during the afternoon. So expect a chilly start to our weekend. We'll be down in the upper 40s for lows here in Atlanta down in the low 40s across much of North Georgia maybe even some upper 30s in some of those little spots those little valleys across far North Georgia. Um, Sunday will warm up to the mid 70s once again and then gradually warming up as we head into this week couple of wasometers, uh, 11s on your wasometer. Those will be 11 alive days on our Tuesday and our Wednesday. Plenty of sunshine all week long. A great week to celebrate fall, to get out and see some of the leaves that are turning. Maybe pick a pumpkin or just drink a nice apple cider. All sounds good, Sam. Thank you. you Ahead, the eyes of the nation closing in on the White House hours after learning the president and the first lady have tested positive for COVID-19. Ahead on primetime, we speak to moderator of Meet the Press, Chuck Todd, on what this means so close to the election.
in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the very... Earlier today, before the news of President Trump going to Walter Reed, Jeff Hellinger spoke with NBC's Chuck Todd from Meet the Press about how the president's diagnosis impacts Washington, D.C. and the country. Chuck, it is a difficult time in Washington, D.C. right now. The whole city, the whole political uh, mechanics of the American government really on edge right now. Absolutely, Jeff. I mean, the, 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 there's a basic question we all have is how extensive is this, is this outbreak among America's political leadership? Because the real concern here, as we've seen, it's quite a few people that seem to be connected to the to some place in this White House that that may be part of spreading. You know, we have Hope Hicks, the president's very close aide. Then the president, you've got Senator Mike Lee, you've the president of the University of Notre Dame, who was also at the ceremony with Amy Coney Barrett last weekend. So there's there's certainly and and then of course you have the president's chief of staff, and while he has not tested positive, he was with the president in Cleveland at the debate. He doesn't wear a mask very often. He was with Judge Amy Coney Barrett on Capitol Hill. He met in the last 48 hours face to face with Mitch McConnell and probably half the Senate Republicans on the Judiciary Committee. So um, that is why Washington and the American political leadership in general is a bit on edge. The Biden campaign obviously was concerned. So far it looks like they've all, everybody in their traveling party and to the debate has tested negative. Um, but that is that is on edge. N never mind the operational impact this is having on the Trump campaign short term. How do you think it impacts voters? And that's a very tough question. Uh, all I can say is this, that that coronavirus yeah. has been very difficult on the Trump White House. It, it has not been something that they have controlled very well and they have paid a yeah. price for it. So you wonder how it plays out this time around with voters. Look, I think it. I, I, you bring up, that's exactly the point I would have made, Jeff, was I don't know how they're going to react now. I can tell you how they've reacted before, right? Whenever the virus is front and center, the president pay, has been paying a political price. I, I believe that, the Joe, that a larger chunk of Joe Biden's lead is due to perceptions of how the president has handled this pandemic. That said, um, 
you know, the president's battling here, and, and there's certainly going to be an empathetic um, feel to this as well. I think the vice president and his campaign need to be very mindful of tone, need to be very mindful of, you know, and I think, I mean, think about it. Joe Biden is essentially running on character, running on the idea that he is, he is full of empathy. Um, you, you better have empathy for everybody, not just for the folks that support you. Meet the Press, Sunday, 10 a.m., right here on 11 Alive. Thank you, Chuck. People, or are you doing this to make money, or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during prime time. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus-related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this? Today's revelation raises concerns about the president's health and threatens to create chaos just 32 days ahead of the election. Alice Barr is in Washington with the latest. With one late night tweet, President Trump has become the face of the COVID-19 pandemic, announcing both he and First Lady Melania Trump tested positive for the virus. They remain in good spirits. Uh... Uh, the president does have mild symptoms. The White House offering only vague details. I'm not going to get into any particular treatment that he may or may not have. At 74 and overweight, the president is considered at higher risk for serious complications. He and the first lady are isolating inside the White House. For the president, there are specific factors that put him at a higher risk for serious complications, so the next few days will be critical to monitoring the president. Now begins a high-stakes hunt for anyone President Trump has had contact with during a busy week, including Tuesday night's debate, during which the Trump family violated a mandatory mask mandate. The president's senior advisor, Hope Hicks, who traveled with him this week, tested positive yesterday. 
The White House Chief of Staff saying today they learned of her diagnosis as President Trump was leaving for a New Jersey fundraiser last night. It was deemed safe for the president to go. Um, he socially distanced. Hours before revealing his diagnosis, the president downplayed coronavirus and a pre-recorded message for a charity event. I just want to say that the end of the pandemic is in sight. Democratic rival Joe Biden sending his well wishes. He tested negative today. President Trump forced to cancel in-person appearances in a critical setback to his campaign, if not his health, 32 days before the election. And again, the president has now gone to Walter Reed Medical Center. President Trump joining a growing list of world leaders who have tested positive for COVID-19. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson was among the first major world leaders confirmed to have the virus. Johnson faced criticism for downplaying the pandemic. He was treated in an ICU for symptoms, but later recovered. Tonight, we are looking into a new claim about an app from the Biden campaign. The question, whether it lets users see the voting record of their contacts in their phone. Here's what our Verify team found out. Tweets like these saying Joe Biden's campaign app tells you which of your contacts have or have not voted led to emails from you asking if it was really true. To verify, we downloaded the app ourselves and checked the fine print of its terms and conditions. So if you install the Vote Joe app, you wind up at a page where it asks to see your contacts. If you click yes, it gives you a list of all your contacts with a little image next to them. Donkey means registered Democrat, elephant registered Republican. This ballot symbol means they're in a battleground state and you get a smiley face if you vote often and a sleepy face if you don't. So if you click on a name, it shows you which elections they voted in, but that's where it stops. You can't see who they actually voted for, just the elections they participated in. So yes, this is a real function of the app, but how does it do this and is it accurate? Well, when you give the app access to your contacts, it takes the numbers and names in your phone and compares them to a database of public voter information kept by the Biden team. But is it accurate? Not always. The app has a disclaimer that since it's using public records, it may be inaccurate or outdated. In our test, a few contacts actually showed up as their relatives because they share phone accounts. So yes, the app does let you see voter information about your contacts using public records from past elections. That's verified. The only real way to opt out of this is saying no when it asks permission to view your contacts. And disclaimer, there's no real way to stop someone else from looking up your basic voting information because it is public record. Folks, if you've got other questions you want us to look into, send us an email. Don't forget the deadline to register for the November election is coming up quickly. It is Monday. The state is urging everyone to check their registration status ahead of that deadline. To do that, just go to the Secretary of State's website and find the MVP section. That stands for My Voter page. You can check your status and register if you haven't done so already. 11 Alive is committed to helping you stay informed ahead of the November election. For details on how you can register along with other election resources, just look for 11alive.com slash vote. What was labeled the trial of the century? Back in the mid 90s, so many eyes were glued to the OJ Simpson double murder trial. OJ accused of killing his wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend Ronald Goldman. Tomorrow marks 25 years since the jury acquitted Simpson of all criminal charges. The man representing OJ, the late Johnny Cochran. Our Nick Stoderman spoke with Cochran's daughter in Atlanta as she reflects on the verdict that captivated the entire nation. It's all anyone could talk about. So I had a heightened sense of anxiety, just like the rest of the world. October 3rd, 1995. The verdict millions of people waited for. Orenthal James Simpson, not guilty of the crime of murder in violation of penal code section 187. I wanted my dad to be safe. I wanted him to be able to go back to his normal life. And I'm Tiffany Cochran. Thanks for joining us. At the time, Tiffany Cochran was a budding TV anchor and reporter in South Carolina and also the daughter of the man who took a leading role in O.J. Simpson's defense, Johnny Cochran. I just remember my dad calling me one night and saying, I need to talk with you. And I was like, okay, what? And he said, I've decided to join the um, 
OJ Simpson defense team. And I was like, good for you. He was like, no, this is going to impact you because the whole world is going to be watching. People are not going to be happy. And I just have no idea how this is going to trickle down. It got to the point that Tiffany started getting calls from the media, threats from viewers, and eventually had to step away from work thousands of miles away from home. My dad was like, I'm going to hire a security guard to watch, watch over you. And I was like, all right. So I remember we were in a hotel room when the verdict came in. And, you know, he was like, do you mind if I watch? I was like, oh, you know. And it was just like, he was like, wow. And I was like, he's like, your life is really not, is really, really, really never going to be the same now. And I know that my dad was ready to get back to a sense of um, normalcy in his life. If it doesn't fit, you must have quit. While her father covered many high-profile cases before his death in 2005, Tiffany says he prided himself helping anyone who needed help. His dream was to make sure everyone has a path to justice. And one phrase that came out of the Simpson trial were, you know, was the no Jays because he loved representing the everyday person. Nearly two years after the verdict, Simpson was found liable for the wrongful deaths of Brown Simpson and Goldman during a civil trial. In a separate case, Simpson was released from a Nevada prison in 2017 after serving nine years for a kidnapping and armed robbery in Las Vegas. Well, the president's diagnosis has many people asking questions about his health. Up next, we are bringing our medical expert, our medical correspondent, Dr. Sujatha Reddy, into the conversation to answer your questions. viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on W.
lot of you have questions after learning that both the president and first lady have tested positive for coronavirus late last night. So we took your questions to our medical expert, Dr. Sujatha Reddy. Many of you are wondering about the risk factors due to the president's age and weight. And we asked Dr. Reddy why weight is a concerning risk factor. We know that people that have obesity or are obese are more likely to have other problems like diabetes, high blood pressure, which by themselves are risk factors for severe complications of coronavirus. But there may also be other things going on like obesity itself makes you more prone to having blood clots in your leg or in your lungs. And we know that coronavirus sets off a major inflammatory response in the body that can also make a person more likely to have a blood clot. So perhaps already having a, you know, a propensity to blood clots and adding COVID makes that person more at risk. Dr. Reddy says symptoms for COVID-19 can take anywhere from three to 14 days to develop. And while his age and weight put the president at a higher risk, we asked Dr. Reddy some of the key ways that President Trump and others can keep mild symptoms from getting worse. Early on for mild symptoms, the treatment's going to be primarily treating the symptoms the person's having. It's all the stuff our moms told us to do, rest, drink lots of fluids, and you know, just kind of take it easy to let your immune system do its thing. Some of you are also concerned about the long term effects of battling COVID-19. We asked Dr. Reddy about the potential for lingering issues. There have been case reports of people dealing with trouble breathing and other complications for months after um, being discharged from the hospital with COVID-19. I think most people recover without any complications, but I think as we're learning, we're seeing that some people, usually the ones that are severely ill and hospitalized, are having some long-term issues. And this is a developing story. We've seen several updates today for, for full coverage of the president's diagnosis and the latest updates. Head over to 11alive.com. Well, it is a nice, clear night out there, beautiful, with very few clouds around, except in the tropics. We're going to talk more about that later. We have our latest tropical storm, Gamma, that formed tonight. But a lot of UGA fans, including Jay Bell over in the next room, uh, will be cheering on the Bulldogs tomorrow. Auburn will be in town, and it is going to be really mild to start, near 70 for tailgating, and then temperatures are going to drop. So definitely take a sweater, sweatshirt, something to stay warm with if you are going to be lucky enough to be going to the game with those temperatures getting down in the low 50s uh, once the game is over. So it will be chilly in Athens tomorrow night. Uh, let's take a look at what we can expect to see with these dry conditions that are filtering in. You know, we had a couple fronts move through and these fronts ushered in a dry northerly flow for us. We have high pressure that is off to our northwest and that northerly flow is going to keep things on the dry side for us and import in some nice cool uh, air that is kind of unseasonably cool. And on the southern end of these fronts, there's something developing in the tropics, and it did develop. It's Tropical Storm Gamma here, about 135 miles southeast of Cozumel, Mexico. And right now, it looks like it'll likely enter the Gulf as a tropical storm sometime over the weekend or into the beginning of next week. Not moving all that quickly to the northwest at around nine miles per hour. It's still technically in the Western Caribbean, but it'll be moving across the Yucatan Peninsula and over into the Gulf the next few days. And it'll weaken a little bit as it moves over land, the tip, northeastern tip of the Yucatan, but then it'll strengthen again as it enters those very warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico. And right now it's looking like it'll continue on that westerly course towards the east Gulf Coast of Mexico, bringing in some very heavy rain and flooding for them. Um, but the spaghetti models still not in complete agreement. Some of them curving it around to, into the south, into the Bay of Campeche, some of them coming up to the north. So that still bears watching. There's still some uncertainty here as to exactly what will happen. But now the general consensus is for it to move westward towards Mexico. And behind that, we have another system that's looking more likely, like it could develop. It's south of the Dominican Republic right now, right here, and it's expected to move into the Western Caribbean, where Gamma is right now. 40% chance of that happening. 
in the next five days. So if it does, the next name on the list after gamma is now delta. And if you remember, we've already been through the normal list of names, and now we're on gamma, which is the 25th name storm of the season. So if we get delta, and if that's the system that becomes delta, it'll be uh, number 26. The all-time record is 27, set back in 2005, that horrible Katrina and Rita year. And we were also into the Greek alphabet. So let's talk about our weather here this weekend. It's going to be really nice. Our temperatures starting to cool off pretty quickly, though. We're already in the upper 50s here, 58 in Atlanta, 59 in Duluth, 55 in Athens. But we're 49 in Carrollton, and we're 46 in Blairsville. So temperatures are dropping pretty quickly in some spots that are, uh, tend to be little valleys. The Peachtree City tends to be a little valley in a little valley. Um, Blairsville's in a little bit of a dip, so cold air likes to rush into those dips, and that's why we can get the coldest temperatures when you have a low-lying area. So we're looking at the temps overnight getting into the upper 40s here in Atlanta. Lots of sunshine as we head into tomorrow morning, and that's going to warm us up nicely. So we should end up seeing those temperatures here warming into the low 70s by the middle of the afternoon. So it's going to be one of those days you start out and you're like, wow, it's really cold. And then by the middle of the afternoon, you may be breaking a sweat if you're in your car. And, you know, the car tends to block all the winds and it heats up inside like a little greenhouse. And so then you want to shed your jacket once you get into the car. But it's going to be a beautiful day to get up to the North Georgia mountains. And I have a feeling it may be a bit crowded up there at the apple orchards and at the pumpkin farm. So it is going to be a cool, clear night and a beautiful weekend. The coldest air of the season so far settling in and a slow warm up as we head into next week. And then we'll be getting back up close to average by the time we get to the middle of next week. So it'll be a chilly start to our Saturday. On our Sunday, we'll see those temps warming up into the low to mid 70s after a cool start of 50 degrees. So 50 is as cool as we've been so far this year. And if you've been cold any of these mornings, then Sunday morning will feel a little chilly to you as well. And then by Tuesday, Wednesday, we get up into the upper 70s. Lots of sunshine. 11's on the wasometer. A couple of great wasometer days, 11 alive days. And then as we head into the end of next week, it stays dry at least until Friday. And then we only have a 20% chance of some scattered showers. Looks good, Sam. Thank you. Recruiting efforts continue to get enough poll workers for Election Day. The pandemic creating, of course, a shortage as traditionally poll workers have been older, the most vulnerable now for COVID-19. Many counties have been working to get more young people to fill the positions, and our Christy Diaz spoke with a trainer about what it takes to become a poll worker. Would you say most young people do it because they want to get paid? Uh, yeah, and honestly, I don't, think, I don't see anything wrong with that, right? It's work. It's labor. Evan Malbro trains people who apply to work the polls, and surprise, it's not a volunteer post. In fact, it's pretty rigorous training. Classes range from four hours to eight hours, depending on the county. After the dysfunction during the June primary, many counties have made adjustments to the training process, including smaller in-person training classes, each potential poll worker with his own machine to practice and a more difficult test to pass. What we go over is broad specs of setting up a precinct, breaking down the precinct, all the way down to the minute uh, which college IDs in the state of Georgia are valid voter ID. If you pass, you are certified for the day of the election. Evan says that's when it gets intense. Hey, these are pretty, pretty long and grueling days, right? You can't leave, right? And there are no shifts. You are there for the entire day. Since you're there before polls open and will stay long after they're closed, they encourage poll workers to vote early. So if a young person is watching right now, what's your best pitch about why they should become a poll worker? Absolutely. Um, it's a great opportunity uh, to see how democracy works firsthand because you'll be a part of it. And then it's a great way to get paid. Well, the best way to get started in all of this is to go to your county's website and look for a link to apply. Evan says if you really want a chance to work this upcoming presidential election in November, you need to reach out as soon as possible, like today, because this month will be full of training leading up to the election. We have put together a voter guide on 11alive.com slash vote to answer all of your voting and election questions from how to register to tracking down your polling location to requesting an absentee ballot.
In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. About 40,000 people are diagnosed with type 1 diagnosis of diabetes each year in the United States. Dominique Trapio never expected to be one of them. She's 25 and had always been very healthy. She also never expected the way a life-saving companion will come to her rescue. Here's Cheryl Preheim. A puppy with life-changing, life-saving potential. You yeah, named him Bowie. Um, he's named after Chadwick Boseman. Bowie is in training. He's training to fulfill his purpose. Bowie is actually living up to his name already. Bowie has already come to the rescue of Dominique Trapio. You know, he's going to be saving my life. In her early 20s, she was the picture of health, young, athletic. Her body started shutting down. She had no idea why. I honestly thought, like, maybe this is the end, so I ended up calling my mom. The diagnosis? Type 1 diabetes. So I work at Emory Healthcare. The young woman who loves helping others found herself on the receiving end. It really taught me not to take every day for granted, you know, you're not promised another day. But she'd need help to safely get through her days and nights long term. And that's where Bowie comes in. When we say that Bowie can save your life, that's yeah. not overstating it, right? Not at all. No, he actually alerted me at least four times that my blood sugar was out of range already, and he's only three months old. Bowie is learning to smell when there are changes in her blood sugar. It often happens when Dominique is sleeping. Bowie wakes her in time to get the treatment she needs. Dogs range anywhere from $20,000 up to $40,000. But I found that there are a lot of people that really care and that are willing to bless you. Every name and gift is a step closer to a superhero pup, always being next to the one he's trained to protect. He loved me. I love him. I think we're going to be an excellent team. Uh, get ready for a crisp, chilly start to tomorrow in the upper 40s and down in the low 40s across much of the North Georgia mountains. And then brilliant sunshine for the rest of the weekend, getting into the low to mid 70s. So a very nice weekend ahead that you can get a lot of fall things done. Get that fall decor going outside. Get those pumpkins stacked up outside your front door. And we'll see those temperatures slowly warm as the week progresses. So no rain really in the next several days, not until Friday. And then we just have a 20% chance. So it looks really terrific, Jennifer. It does look really good. More news and weather ahead in prime time. Stay with us.
be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus-related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Live News Primetime on the ATL starts now. President Trump at Walter Reed Medical Center in Bethesda, Maryland tonight outside of Washington, D.C. He will be there for treatment at the advice of his doctors. It's been almost 24 hours since President Trump announced he and the first lady tested positive for the coronavirus. According to NBC, the president plans to work out of the presidential office while at Walter Reed. Earlier this evening, he tweeted this video message. I want to thank everybody for the tremendous support. I'm going to Walter Reed Hospital. I think I'm doing very well, but we're going to make sure that things work out. The First Lady is doing very well. So uh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. I will never forget it. Thank you. This is video of the President leaving the White House this evening, boarding Marine One for the flight to Walter Reed. Here's what we know so far. The White House doctors say the President is taking an experimental antibody cocktail along with zinc, vitamin D, and aspirin. He is very fatigued but in good spirits. As for the First Lady, she is experiencing mild coughing and a headache. Everybody else in the First Family has tested negative so far. The President's campaign team says all of his planned events have either been postponed or are going to be held virtually. Political leaders now across the world are sharing well wishes for the family late this afternoon. We heard from Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden. My wife Jill and I prayed that they'll make a quick and full recovery. This is not a matter of politics. It's a bracing reminder to all of us that we have to take this virus seriously. It's not going away automatically. 
We have to do our part to be responsible. Republican Senator Mike Lee of Utah confirming he has tested positive after meeting in person with Supreme Court nominee Amy Coney Barrett on Tuesday. Barrett herself tested negative today with CNN reporting that she was diagnosed with coronavirus earlier this summer, but that she has since recovered. President Obama said at a fundraiser tonight for Joe Biden that we want to extend our best wishes to the President of the United States and the First Lady. Michelle and I are hopeful that they and others that have been affected by COVID-19 around the country are getting the care they need and that they are going to be on a path to a speedy recovery. So what happens now? There are contingencies anytime a U.S. president is ill or has some other type of emergency. Our verified team in NBC News spent the day looking at scenarios. 11 Alive's Brittany Klein Peter reports on some of the more pressing ones. From the election to presidential duties, President Trump's recent COVID-19 diagnosis has raised a lot of questions. One of the biggest, what happens if the president's condition worsens? Under the 25th Amendment, the president can transfer power to his vice president if he knows he is too sick to carry out his duties. If the president knows that he may be incapacitated, like, for example, he's going to have scheduled surgery or there has to be anesthesia or something, then he signs a statement and transfers power temporarily to the vice president. Another topic, the 2020 election. There's no sign the president would have to drop out of the race, but in the event that happens, the Republican National Committee would decide who would replace him on the ballot according to committee rules. And as far as the president missing upcoming debates, it's not clear yet. The CDC recommends to quarantine for 14 days after exposure or diagnosis. The next debate is scheduled for October 15th, which would be 13 days from now. At last check, Trump's team says that he plans to continue to carry out his role as president. NBC reports that he has not yet transferred over power to Vice President Pence. And as far as campaigning events, he has postponed them while he quarantines. The talk of COVID-19 testing, again, a topic of discussion. Experts say the president and the first lady's diagnosis could rev up testing. 11 Alive, Shanu Her also spoke to a medical professional about the likelihood of that outcome. Dr. Frida Fisher is a triple board certified doctor at Emory University Hospital. She believes because of President Trump's positive COVID-19 diagnosis, local COVID-19 testing lines could get longer. With President Donald Trump going to Walter Reed Hospital, Dr. Frieda Fisher says this now thrusts the seriousness of the coronavirus to the forefront again. I believe that what happened with the president will make people understand that it doesn't discriminate. Anyone can get COVID-19. It must be respected and taken seriously. That's why she says she believes testing will rev up in the state. I do believe that more people will try to get tested, and I do hope that Georgia responds and there will be a greater need and a greater availability. However, people responded with resounding no's when we posted the question on 11 Alive's social media. Following the president's diagnosis, are you more likely to get tested for COVID-19? One person said, if I have symptoms so I can protect my family. Dr. Frieda says testing is a good tool, but it doesn't prevent the spread. Instead, she says, follow the guidelines. Wear masks, socially distance, and have good hand hygiene. And Dr. Frieda says even if you're asymptomatic, but you've been exposed to someone who has COVID-19, you should get tested. Medical research shows the next 10 days could be critical for the president and the first lady. The first week can be mild, but doctors say around seven days in is when someone can start experiencing shortness of breath and could be admitted to the hospital. By day 10 or 11 is when people with more severe symptoms end up in the ICU. The president has two of the biggest risk factors when it comes to COVID. He is 74 and he is medically considered obese. Caitlin Ross talked to a medical expert here in Georgia about what it could mean. Even though the entire world has been studying COVID-19 closely, medical experts say there's still so much we don't know about the virus. While the president does have increased risk factors, Dr. Mary Breath Sexton, an expert in infectious disease, says age doesn't mean everything. But one of the things we know with COVID is we have seen people in their 90s who have no symptoms and people in their 20s who land in the intensive care unit 
So some of this we don't fully understand yet about who gets so sick and why. Dr. Sexton says advanced age has proven to be more of a risk factor, so we wanted to look at the numbers here in Georgia. The first lady is 50 years old. Here in Georgia, that age group is broken down to 50 to 59. There have been almost 46,000 cases, 5,000 of them hospitalized, and 665 deaths. The president is 74. In his age group, there have been almost 18,000 cases in Georgia, with nearly 5,000 hospitalizations and 1,898 deaths. So while there are fewer cases in the president's age group, that population has accounted for more of the deaths. Dr. Murdad Sami says he hasn't seen a slowdown of patients coming into his hospital in any age group. I haven't seen a single change. I'm seeing the same numbers of elderly patients as I am, teenagers as I am, even children. The White House reports the president and the first lady have mild symptoms right now, so doctors say that means supportive care, getting plenty of rest, drinking plenty of fluids, and isolation. Obesity is also a major risk factor. According to the CDC, it may triple the risk of hospitalization due to the infection. It also decreases lung capacity and can make ventilation more difficult and has been linked to an impaired immune system. President Trump spent this past week traveling to several states, from D.C. to Ohio, Minnesota, then to New Jersey, along the way coming in contact with a lot of people who could now be potentially exposed. Some White House staff in contact with the president are now self-quarantining themselves. And more could be identified as health officials conduct contact tracing to notify people potentially exposed. Here is Reveal investigator Andy Parati, who himself successfully battled COVID, has a reminder of how all this works. From restaurants to schools, contact tracing has helped public health officials track those potentially exposed to reduce the spread of the virus. Here is how it works. After a local health department has notified someone tests positive for COVID-19, a contact tracer tracks down the infected patient. They then request contact information of the people who they were around, starting at least two days before exhibiting symptoms. But not everyone only people who are within six feet for 15 minutes or more at a time. The Fazlai Khan is the chief epidemiologist at Fulton County's Board of Health. Even if, let's say, a person who was infected was working behind the counter or somewhere and was just casually serving people, that would not constitute a close contact. But his or her fellow staff who are working in and around them in close proximity would be close contacts. If a person is a school teacher, on the other hand, it could be 100 kids that were potentially, and then others, faculty and staff, that could have been potentially infected. Identities of positive COVID-19 patients are kept anonymous. Those exposed are asked to self-quarantine for at least 14 days. Contact tracing is going to be really important. Bob Bednarczyk is an assistant professor of global health and epidemiology at Emory's Rollins School of Public Health. Even if they don't personally feel ill, they can still be infected, they can still be potentially spreading the virus. Some Georgia counties use text messaging to notify potentially COVID-infected patients, but epidemiologists say that should not replace what they call shoe leather epidemiology, which includes calling and talking to someone on the phone. We have more coverage on 11alive.com, including reaction from local politicians, those wishing the first family well, and others who are not so sympathetic. You can also download the 11 Alive app. Calling for transparency, the family of a teen shot by police in Cobb County demanding answers. What they want to see next. And your 11 Alive storm trackers are watching those temperatures carefully as they continue to drop down and that dry air filters in. So coming up, just how low those numbers will go tonight and what you can expect for this weekend. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. 
the things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory. The family of a teen shot and killed by Cobb County police are now calling for greater transparency in the case. Specifically, they want police to release body and dash camera video to show what happened just before Vincent Truitt was shot. 11 Alive's Latasha Givens has more with the family. My son was murdered mid-July. I have yet to view anybody camera footage regarding to this matter. Not only was my baby murdered, 18 hours passed before we were notified. My child died alone. I come to you this morning as a hurt, angry, all of the above as a father. The parents of Vincent Truant are sharing their daily pain over the loss of their son. According to GBI, in July, a vehicle was stolen out of Atlanta. Investigators say a Cobb County police officer spotted the stolen vehicle with three teens inside at 291 Riverside Parkway. They say the driver didn't stop for the officer, leading them on a short chase that ended at 270 Riverside Parkway. GBI says two people got out of the car and ran. At some point, Truett was shot by police. From there, the family's attorney, Gerald Griggs, says the narrative given to the Truett family has changed twice. According to law enforcement and what's been publicly reported, Mr. Truett exited the vehicle, and the first story was that he fired at the officer. We now know that that is not true. The second story is that Mr. Truett exited the vehicle and brandished a weapon. We also know that that's not true. GBI says it's still completing its investigation. An autopsy confirms the 17-year-old was shot twice in the back. His family is now calling for transparency and a detailed explanation of what led to the gunfire. Vincent has never been a violent person. He has no violent history whatsoever. Vince took pride in playing basketball on the police athletic league. And we reached out to Cobb County Police about the concerns expressed by the family, and they responded to those claims. They tell us they have been in contact with the family, but referred them to other agencies when they could no longer answer their questions. And Chief Cox wants to clarify the department never said Truett shot at an officer. They simply said he pointed a gun at them. The GBI did recover a weapon from the scene. We'll continue to follow this investigation. A little chilly tonight. Temperatures expected to drop. Meteorologist Samantha Moore joins us now with how cold it may get overnight. Yeah, they're already dropping, Jeff. I mean, here in Athens right now, it's 53 degrees, which is pretty darn chilly for this time of night. So that gives you an indication of how cold it will likely be tomorrow night here in Sanford Stadium. Of course, they're all draped in red, getting ready for the big Auburn Georgia game tomorrow. It's going to be tomorrow evening at 730. So if you are heading in that direction and you're going to be out on the town later in Sanford Stadium late. It is going to be quite chilly as the game progresses since it starts at 730. It probably won't wrap up to what around 11 o'clock 1130 and that's when temperatures will be in the low 50s. So a beautiful crisp fall day and then a nice chilly fall night. So we're looking at that dry air that's filtered in behind a couple of frontal systems. These frontal systems moved in a little earlier in the week and brought all that moisture. It took all the moisture along with it. So the rain here is from about Orlando southwest 
westward tonight. And the cool air is spilling in around an area of high pressure that's to our north, and that's bringing in a bit of a northerly flow here. And that's what's going to allow our temperatures tonight to really cool off. It's dry, the air is cool, the winds are fairly light. They could be totally calm, but they're around 5 to 10 miles per hour right now out of the northwest. So temperatures the last 20 hours, we cooled off to 50, and that's as cold as we've been all year for an overnight low. We hit it this morning. We hit it on September 30th, so that's as cold as we have been, and we'll be a few degrees colder tonight. And then we managed to make it up into the upper 60s today at 69 degrees. And what a contrast to this time last year. On this date, 2019, we had a string of 90s, and we hit 96 degrees one year ago today. So that was 27 degrees hotter than we were today. So I like this nice fall weather. I just like the crispness to the air and those cool temperatures. It makes you feel all energetic. So 45 is what we're at already in Blairsville. It is going to be a really cold night in many North Georgia mountain communities. 53 in Athens, as I said earlier, 49 in Carrollton already, 49 in the Grange. So temperatures are dropping very rapidly. The air is very dry. We're some 16 degrees colder than we were at this time yesterday in LaGrange, 15 degrees colder in Peachtree City, 13 degrees colder in Athens. So definitely feeling a lot chillier tonight than we did last night. Clear skies, great for viewing that harvest moon. It came up at 806. It's pretty high in the sky now in the southeastern horizon. So it's uh, a beautiful view out there tonight. A 10 on your rosometer on Saturday on that scale of 1 to an 11, with an 11 being a perfect day, pretty darn perfect, a 10. We're just starting out a little on the chilly side and we'll be a few degrees below average. So a beautiful Saturday with unseasonably cool temperatures. And then hour by hour, lots of sunshine tomorrow. No problems there. No rain in the forecast whatsoever in the near future here. So a clear and cool night tonight, the coldest night of the season so far. And then a slow gradual warm up as we head into next week. So there's that northerly flow, dry conditions, no rain in sight. Getting into our uh, Sunday, same thing. It's going to be hard to find a cloud in the sky. It's going to be so darn clear. And that continues into much of next week. This is a very dry pattern for us, dominated by that north or northeasterly flow. So a chilly start to your Saturday. Lots of sunshine. Sunday, a little bit warmer, a little bit warmer still on Monday and Tuesday. Check that out. We have a couple of 11s there on your Monday and Tuesday. So a couple 11 alive days for the start of next week. And then we have a couple of 10s after that. Still really nice. Temperatures getting up pretty close to average for this time of year. And then we'll end up seeing a slight chance for rain by the time we get to the end of the week. And that's not until Friday. And that's just scattered showers at this point. Hey, your weather wow moment is a great one. It's that harvest moon that was brought to us by Dinah Desmore in Hilton Head. She was over there. And boy, what a great picture she got. Such incredible detail. And it was so clear and that moon was so huge and it is bright. It really lights up the night sky. We'd like to see your weather wow moments as well. If you'd like to be one of our 11 Alive Storm Trackers, we'd love to have you. Just go to our 11 Alive Storm Tracker Facebook page and sign up. All right, coming up after the break, socially distant trick-or-treating. One couple's idea to safely celebrate Halloween this year. I'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. 
For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. If you are worried about safely handing out candy this Halloween, you're not alone. A Virginia couple came up with a perfect solution for socially distant trick-or-treating, and their idea now is going viral. Lindsay Ward has that story. This candy slide is what happens when you have an engineer and a future pediatrician working together to help save Halloween. Not satisfied with a candy toss from the porch, Chris and Nicole Miner started brainstorming. You know, I'm sure that we could just like toss candy to kids, you know, when they come up to the front door, but that's no fun. You know, we want to do something interesting with this. Let's make a slide or, you know, let's do something to make trick-or-treating more exciting. The husband and wife hit up the PV seat pipe aisle at their hardware store. And we were like, hey, you know what, actually we could like put legs on this thing and we could build a whole, you know, contraption out of this and paint it and put decorations on it. And so it just just kind of grew into what it is. After building and testing their brainchild, he posted a picture to Facebook. To his surprise, people love it. And I log on to Facebook a few hours later and it's been shared by thousands and thousands of people. And I'm just, it just absolutely blows my mind that so many people have taken such interest in it. Those interested have even started posting their own variation ideas in the comments. This thing has so many applications. There are people who have different, you know, style steps on their front porch and, um, you know, people might want theirs to be different colors or have different decorations on it. Chris even switched up the end of the pipe on his original design to make it safer. This tool may be a trick or treat saver in 2020, but he plans to keep it around. Do you think you guys will use it again? Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is our new method of trick-or-treating for sure. <laughs> Nearly 20 hours of grand jury recordings from the Breonna Taylor case released this afternoon. Next, we are hearing some of that testimony. Streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. 
There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus-related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. developments today in the case of Brianna Taylor. Just before noon, hours of grand jury recordings were released. This just two days after Kentucky's attorney general requested a delay. Here's NBC's Jay Gray with details. After months of protest and demands from her family for transparency and more information in the death of Breonna Taylor, today, Kentucky Attorney General Daniel Cameron, complying with a court order, released audio recordings of the grand jury proceedings in the case. Louisville police officer Sean Hoover describing the scene just before the raid. We knocked on the door, the police waited, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds, knocked again. Witnesses and Taylor's boyfriend, Kenneth Walker, who was inside her apartment, say they did not hear officers announce themselves before crashing through the front door. Some of the most compelling sound is from Officer John Mattingly, the jury listening to a March interview where he describes being shot by Walker, who says he thought Mattingly was an intruder. As soon as the shot hit, I could feel the heat in my leg. And so I just returned fire, I got four rounds off. About 15 hours of audio is being released. Cameron, in a written statement, saying, I'm confident that once the public listens to the recordings, they will see that our team presented a thorough case to the Jefferson County Grand Jury. Taylor's family and supporters across the country say the tapes are the next step in their ongoing march for justice. To read more about the grand jury recordings, you can head over to 11alive.com. There you will find a live blog with excerpts pulled from the 20 hours of audio. Today's stunning revelation raising concerns about the president's health and threatens to create chaos. Here we are 32 days before the election. Alice Barr in Washington with the very latest. With one late night tweet, President Trump has become the face of the COVID-19 pandemic, announcing both he and First Lady Melania Trump tested positive for the virus. They remain in good spirits. Uh, uh, the president does have mild symptoms. The White House offering only vague details. I'm not going to get into any particular treatment that he may or may not have. At 74 and overweight, the president is considered at higher risk for serious complications. He and the first lady are isolating inside the White House. For the president, there are specific factors that put him at a higher risk for serious complications, so the next few days will be critical to monitoring the president. Now begins a high-stakes hunt for anyone President Trump has had contact with during a busy week, including Tuesday night's debate, during which the Trump family violated a mandatory mask mandate. The president's senior advisor, Hope Hicks, who traveled with him this week, tested positive yesterday. 
The White House Chief of Staff saying today they learned of her diagnosis as President Trump was leaving for a New Jersey fundraiser last night. It was deemed safe for the president to go. Um, he socially distanced. Hours before revealing his diagnosis, the president downplayed coronavirus and a pre-recorded message for a charity event. I just want to say that the end of the pandemic is in sight. Democratic rival Joe Biden sending his well wishes. He tested negative today. President Trump forced to cancel in-person appearances in a critical setback to his campaign, if not his health, 32 days before the election. President Trump growing, uh, joining a growing list of world leaders who have tested positive for COVID-19. Among them, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson was the first major world leader to confirm to have COVID-19. Johnson faced criticism for downplaying the pandemic. He was treated in the ICU for symptoms, but later recovered. Earlier today, before the news of President Trump going to Walter Reed, I talked with NBC's Chuck Todd about how the president's diagnosis impacts Washington, D.C. and the trickle-down effect to the rest of the country. Chuck, it is a difficult time in Washington, D.C. right now. The whole city, the whole political uh, mechanics of the American government really on edge right now. Absolutely, Jeff. I mean, the, 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 there's a basic question we all have is how extensive is this, is this outbreak among America's political leadership? Because the real concern here is we've seen it's quite a few people that seem to be connected to the to some place in this White House that that may be part of spreading. You know, we have Hope Hicks, the president's very close aide, then the president. You've got Senator Mike Lee, you've the president of the University of Notre Dame, who was also at the ceremony with Amy Coney Barrett last weekend. So there's there's certainly and and then of course you have the president's chief of staff, and while he has not tested positive, he was with the president in Cleveland at the debate. He doesn't wear a mask very often. He was with Judge Amy Coney Barrett on Capitol Hill. He met in the last 48 hours face to face with Mitch McConnell and probably half the Senate Republicans on the Judiciary Committee. So um, that is why Washington and the American political leadership in general is a bit on edge. The Biden campaign obviously was concerned. So far it looks like they've all, everybody in their traveling party to the debate has tested negative. Um, but that is that is on edge. N never mind the operational impact this is having on the Trump campaign short term. How do you think it impacts voters? And that's a very tough question. Uh, all I can say is this, that, that coronavirus yeah. has been very difficult on the Trump White House. It, it has not been something that they have controlled very well and they have paid a yeah. price for it. So you wonder how it plays out this time around with voters. Look, I think it... I, 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 you bring up, that's exactly the point I would have made, Jeff, was I don't know how they're going to react now. I can tell you how they've reacted before, right? Whenever the virus is front and center, the president pay, has been paying a political price. I, I believe that, the Joe, that a larger chunk of Joe Biden's lead is due to perceptions of how the president has handled this pandemic. That said, um, you know, the president's battling here, and, and there's certainly going to be an empathetic um, feel to this as well. I think the vice president and his campaign need to be very mindful of tone, need to be very mindful of, you know, and I think, I mean, think about it. Joe Biden is essentially running on character, running on the idea that he is, he is full of empathy. Um, you, you better have empathy for everybody, not just for the folks that support you. Meet the Press, Sunday, 10 a.m., right here on 11 Alive. Tonight, we are looking into a new claim about an app from the Biden campaign. The question whether it lets users see the voting records of the contacts in their phone. Here's what our Verify team found. Tweets like these saying Joe Biden's campaign app tells you which of your contacts have or have not voted led to emails from you asking if it was really true. To verify, we downloaded the app ourselves and checked the fine print of its terms and conditions. So if you install the Vote Joe app, you wind up at a page where it asks to see your contacts. If you click yes, it gives you a list of all your contacts with a little image next to them. Donkey means registered Democrat, elephant registered Republican. This ballot symbol means they're in a battleground state and you get a smiley face if you vote often and a sleepy face if you don't. So if you click on a name, it shows you which elections they voted in. But that's where it stops. You can't see who they actually voted for, just the elections they participated in. So yes, this is a real function of the app, but how does it do this and is it accurate? 
Well, when you give the app access to your contacts, it takes the numbers and names in your phone and compares them to a database of public voter information kept by the Biden team. But is it accurate? Not always. The app has a disclaimer that since it's using public records, it may be inaccurate or outdated. In our test, a few contacts actually showed up as their relatives because they share phone accounts. So yes, the app does let you see voter information about your contacts using public records from past elections. That's verified. The only real way to opt out of this is saying no when it asks permission to view your contacts. And disclaimer, there's no real way to stop someone else from looking up your basic voting information because it is public record. Folks, if you've got other questions you want us to look into, send us an email. All right, and we have all of the information that you possibly need. You can check out the voter registration, which is coming up on Monday. And uh, the opportunities are there for you right now to uh, go to our website at 11alive.com to try and figure out uh, exactly where you shape up in all of this. Again, 11alive.com is it. Also, the Secretary of State's website is a place for the MVP section. That stands for My Voter Page. You can check your status and register if you're not already registered. 11 Alive committed to helping you be informed ahead of the November election. For details on how you can register along with other election resources, go to 11alive.com slash vote. Do you have what it takes to work the polls on Election Day? Next, we will take a look at the hours and hours of training that people go through to make sure that your vote is secure. And today, the 25th storm, named storm of the Atlantic season formed. We are now looking at tropical storm Gamma. So coming up, Gamma is going to be heading into the Gulf. We'll talk about where Gamma could be headed. And also, we'll talk about what you can expect this weekend right here in town. Coming up, a great night for high school football. An early look at some of tonight's highlights coming up in sports. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. 
Televised newscasts not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. About 40,000 people are diagnosed with type 1 uh, diabetes each year in the United States, and Dominique Trapillo never expected to be one of them. She's 25, always had been healthy, and she also never expected the way a life-saving companion would come to her rescue. Here is Cheryl Freeheim. A puppy with life-changing, life-saving potential. Yeah, I named him Bowie. Um, he's named after Chadwick Bozeman. Bowie is in training. He's training to fulfill his purpose. Bowie is actually living up to his name already. Bowie has already come to the rescue of Dominique Trapio. You know, he's going to be saving my life. In her early 20s, she was the picture of health, young, athletic. Her body started shutting down. She had no idea why. I honestly thought, like, maybe this is the end, so I ended up calling my mom. The diagnosis? Type 1 diabetes. So I work at Emory Healthcare. The young woman who loves helping others found herself on the receiving end. It really taught me not to take every day for granted, you know, you're not promised another day. But she'd need help to safely get through her days and nights long term, and that's where Bowie comes in. When we say that Bowie can save your life, that's yeah. not overstating it, right? Not at all. No, he actually alerted me at least four times that my blood sugar was out of range already, and he's only three months old. Bowie is learning to smell when there are changes in her blood sugar. It often happens when Dominique is sleeping. Bowie wakes her in time to get the treatment she needs. Dogs range anywhere from $20,000 up to $40,000. But I found that there are a lot of people that really care and that are willing to bless you. Every name and gift is a step closer to a superhero pup, always being next to the one he's trained to protect. He loved me. I love him. I think we're going to be an excellent team. Dominique and Bowie had more training today. They hope to be together soon on a permanent basis. We have more information on how you can help make that possible, along with resources on type 1 diabetes on 11alive.com. Recruiting efforts continue to get enough poll workers for Election Day. The pandemic has created a shortage. Poll workers traditionally have been older and the group now most vulnerable to COVID-19. Many counties have been working to try to get more young people to fill those positions. Christy Diaz talked to a trainer about what it takes to become a poll worker. Would you say most young people do it because they want to get paid? Uh, yeah, and honestly, I don't, think, I don't see anything wrong with that, right? It's work. It's labor. Evan Malbro trains people who apply to work the polls. And surprise, it's not a volunteer post. In fact, it's pretty rigorous training. Classes range from four hours to eight hours, depending on the county. After the dysfunction during the June primary, many counties have made adjustments to the training process, including smaller in-person training classes, each potential poll worker with his own machine to practice and a more difficult test to pass. What we go over is broad specs of setting up a precinct, breaking down the precinct, all the way down to the minute uh, which college IDs in the state of Georgia are valid voter ID. If you pass, you are certified for the day of the election. Evan says that's when it gets intense. Hey, these are pretty, pretty long and grueling days, right? You can't leave, right? And there are no shifts. You are there for the entire day. Since you're there before polls open and will stay long after they're closed, they encourage poll workers to vote early. So if a young person is watching right now, what's your best pitch about why they should become a poll worker? Absolutely. Um, it's a great opportunity uh, to see how democracy works firsthand because you'll be a part of it. And then it's a great way to get paid. And the best way to get started is to go to your county website to look for a link to apply. Evan says if you really want a chance to work the presidential election in November, you ought to reach out today because this month will be full throttle with training leading up to Election Day.
Well, the tropics are getting active once again. We've had a nice little respite, a nice little early October, late September break for several days, but now things are starting to get more active once again. We have our newest tropical storm here in the Western Caribbean. It's going to be crossing over the Yucatan Peninsula over the course of this weekend. So you know we already air into the Greek alphabet, and now we are on name number three. We went through alpha, beta, and now gamma. Uh, so we are already down three. So we've had 25 name storms this season. The record is 27. So we are fast approaching the all time record. And that was set back in that active year of 2005. So let's talk about where it's formed along this frontal boundary that's out stretching across the Gulf of Mexico here. So we've had a couple fronts move through that ushered in our cooler, drier air. But as oftentimes happens in the Gulf this time of year in October, we can see storms forming here on the southern end of it. So while we're enjoying the cool, dry air here in the tropics, it makes things more unsettled when you have a trough low pressure, which is what a frontal system is. And these systems like to kind of get going near that area of low pressure. And that's exactly what has happened here. So this is Tropical Storm Gamma. National Hurricane Center deemed it a tropical storm as of the 8 o'clock advisory. And it is going to be moving. Now this is the 11 o'clock advisory. It is going to continue that movement across the Yucatan Peninsula. It looks like the latest run is trending a little bit further to the south across the Bay of Campeche. So now the model's taking it more here into uh, the southern portion of Mexico. So we'll have to watch it carefully the next few days. The models are still in disagreement, some taking it to the west, some taking it to the south, some taking it to the north. So we'll have to continue to keep our eye on it. And after that, there's another area that could develop into our next tropical depression is a 40% chance of developing the next five days. It's south of Dominican Republic right now, and it's expected to move into the Western Caribbean, just about where Gamma is at the moment. So we'll going to see these tropics continue to be pretty active. Of course, we've already had the peak, which is September 10th, but there's a second peak that happens at the beginning of October, and we're in that second peak right now, so it makes sense that we're seeing more storms form. And the season doesn't end into November 30th. And of course, you can have a hurricane any time of year. Well, the last 20 hours, we got down to 50 degrees. It's as cool as we've been so far this season. And now we're already at 57. So we're cooling off quickly here tonight. We're at 53 in Athens, 53 in Rome, and 49 in Carrollton, 47 in LaGrange. So that's some 15 to 16 degrees cooler than we were as of this time yesterday. So a big cool down for us. And we're going to be down into the upper 40s overnight tonight and getting up into the low 70s for a daytime high. So a chilly start to our weekend. We should start to see a little recovery heading into Sunday and Monday, slowly warming up a bit. A couple 11 alive days on Monday and Tuesday with beautiful conditions expected. And then no rain through next week until we get to Friday. And then it's only a 20% chance. And welcome everyone. Team 1 1, the calendar has turned to October. That means cooler weather, as Samantha told us. And the football is a little bit more meaningful, so pumpkin spice it up. We're ready to go here with the best highlights from the best games. We start with Cartersville and Cherokee from our friends at Born to Compete. Cartersville on the road to take on a very good Cherokee team. And this would be a close one all the way. AJ Swan out of the pocket to Adarius Harshaw. Great catch. Cherokee now in the red zone. So later, Austin Trimble and watch him push all the way near the one yard line and it gets Cherokee just a little bit closer and closer. Keith Adam Jr. carrying it in for Cherokee, finally punching it in for the Warriors. A hard fought battle. Cherokee is your winner, 14 to 12, the final. DeKalb County Schools begin their schedule after a delay and they return. The very good matchup, Southwest DeKalb taking on Tucker. Tucker up 3-0, Amir Streeter, the fake handoff. Downfield for the uh, senior Isaiah Rahim. 
Tucker up 9-0 after a blocked PAT. Next quarter, Tucker in possession. Streeter finding Raheem again. And watch him do his thing from there. He bounces off would-be tacklers. Tucker extends the lead to 17-0. First half wasn't all Tucker. Streeter's pass here is batted at the line. Caleb Grant coming down with the INT. And he returns it into the red zone. A Tucker goal line stand would keep Southwest DeKalb from ending the shutout. Tucker, 29 to 12. They are your winner. A big but socially distant crowd at this one to see some of the top players in the state. Prince Avenue taking on the Wesleyan Wolves. Scoreless opening quarter. Wolves with a football. Ryan Rose to Griffin Caldwell. He'll blow up some defenders on his way to the end zone. And Wesleyan's out in front 7 0, but. Wasn't going to stay that way. A back and forth affair. Then the Wolves on the kickoff. Prince Avenue making a house call. Landon Owens. The kick returned for a touchdown. It's all tied up at seven. The home team not going away easy. Rose to William Brewell on the outside. Unscathed. The touchdown. They go up 14 to seven. Third quarter then. Prince up 31 to 20. They've got that future dog quarterback. Brock. Vandegriff and uh, he gets the TD Prince Avenue 52 to 26. Brock is 6'3. He is a load. He could play his dad's the head coach there too. An early look at our team 1 1 game of the week fellowship Christian taking on North Cop Christian and Josh Cole there a 38 yard touchdown 7 nothing FC then Garrett Wagner a touchdown they go up 13 nothing. Fellowship Christian not showing a lot of fellowship tonight. <laughs> They're beating them up 27 to nothing is the final. That is it for sports. We have more coming up on 11 Alive. We'll take a break here and wrap things up right after this. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov slash COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today.
Ah, we're gonna have a very chilly start tomorrow. The coldest night we've had so far this fall. So it will be a little bit of a an awakening as we head out the door tomorrow. And then we end up in the low 70s by tomorrow afternoon. We should be around 50 on Sunday morning and then 74 in the afternoon. So you can see each day we warm it up a little bit. A couple 11 alive days surrounded by a bunch of 10. So what a week it is. I think it's one of the greatest weeks I can remember at the beginning of October. No storms in the forecast. There's a 20% chance of some showers on Friday. So Jeff, time to get planning. I love it. I love it. Thank you, Samantha. And thank you for watching 11 Alive Primetime. We're over on 11 Alive here in a couple of minutes. We're taking roll call tonight, so don't be late. You don't want to be on our bad list. Mm -mm. With people who are sick, avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects with household cleaning spray. For more information, visit cdc.gov COVID-19. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. Today at noon on 11 Alive. We are seeing that lack of smell or altered taste can be a symptom. We answer your coronavirus related medical questions. Because 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. In times of great uncertainty, some things become more clear. The things we take for granted, the people we depend on daily. Here at 11 Alive, we'd like to say thank you. First responders, medical staff, sanitation workers, truck drivers, postal workers, and every brave Georgian doing their part to make a difference. We see you, we hear you, and we appreciate all that you do. Let's start with a viral message going around. Quote, vast majority of people who died had ibuprofen Advil in their system. This message is fake. We just bought 20 dust masks for $97. Are you doing this to help people or are you doing this to make money or both? Both. Take this email sent to the Verify team. Is it safe to have your house cleaned by outside workers? The best practice is to limit guests to emergencies only. We know things are changing every day, but we're here with you. Continuous COVID-19 coverage during primetime. We're committed to giving you facts, not fear. On 11 Alive News Primetime, weeknights from 8 to 11 on WATF. There are everyday actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Wash your hands. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. 